Now I'm recording. Okay. Um, furthermore, what? Let me just remind you. Here we are in like lesson seven or so, eight, something like that, and um, out of thirty-nine, and uh, we are inching our ways towards the actual philosophy. Now, when I read your <coughs> introductions about me, the vast majority of you are very interested in philosophy. And so just remember, it's like all of this is laying the groundwork to actually really capital G get Confucianism, Taoism, and so forth. Um, does anybody have any questions for me before we move on set? When are we going to, uh, are we going to, like, how long before we start reading works that are classified by their authors as fiction? Like, this by their author is considered true. Um, how, when, when are we, we going to start, start reading? reading something like The Three Kingdoms or like... Oh. Uh, I repeat, most of the people in the in the uh, introductory forums said they were interested in philosophy, which is literature. And so after the philosophy unit, which hasn't started yet, we're still doing epic, and it's like this is pretty much our last reading uh, before we we jump into Confucianism, Taoism, Buddhism. And if you want, it's trust me, it's really interesting the directions that Greek philosophy took. Because the West goes off in this direction, and China goes off in this direction philosophically, and for the next 2,000 years, 2,500 years, because Plato and Confucius lived roughly the same time, Plato's a little later, um, they go off in absolutely different directions. And that is why it's just so interesting to like, it's another East-West thing, it's like, so that really explains a lot about why East Asia is the way it is and why the West is the way it is too. Um, I will be polling you about whether you want to include some stuff on Greek philosophy in order to be able to, again, see both of them more clearly. You look at an apple next to an orange and you notice more about each by just comparing and noting the differences and similarities. I picture maybe 10 classes on philosophy. That gives us still another 20 odd, about 20 more classes for other things, okay? To answer your question. Any other questions? It's just a re like a request, it's like a suggestion. Like uh, recently there was this Hong Kong movie that came out called The Monkey King. So after we, you know, read that. I, I've thought or, about doing an entire course. I'm gonna start offering like, let's read the Three Kingdoms all semester. It's a thousand page novel. Can we be online and not a sit in class course? Stop. Where's the where's the where's the mute button? Mute. Um, an online course. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, we'll just all come in here and we'll sit on our computers. And no, search. I meant like you don't have to. We don't like have you on our schedule as Mr. Burrell teacher. Like instead, it's like a club, like a book club. Watch me, watch me after class. Oh my god, he's like walking a bird. Take the bird out for a walk. Take the bird out for a walk. Alright. Um, anybody have any same or normal questions? No? Zach, you had one. You had one? No. Oh, you, actually, I do, I do have a question now. Now that you mentioned the reading with you, can you think, will you actually be off next semester? Next semester, no. All course offerings are for the following year. And so, the, the Monkey King. Okay, Seth, back to the Monkey King. How many of you don't know the Monkey King, a.k.a. Journey to the West? It's Monkey. You Really, you've never seen a little children's television show at the Hawker Center on TV? The Monkey King? I watched like 20 minutes of it in Chinese in fifth grade. Is that crazy, Gina? It's crazy for me. Wait, for, a, you're for an like, Asian, right? Yeah. It's like, it's, that's like, that's like, like Peter Pan, right? Yeah. Like, it's like they, Peter Pan. Everyone loves Monkey King. Wait, where are you from? Korea. Korea. Yeah, the it's Monkey King. Really? You've, the monkey monkey king. King. You've never seen the Monkey King? It's even like, okay. All right. Ming Dynasty novel. China has four great novels. The, 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 four, the four great novels, they love to count things. Everything's enumerated, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the five Confucian classics, the four great novels, the three sage kings, on and on. Um, the four noble truths, except I'm lying, that's Buddha. 
One of them is the Monkey King, the journey to the West. Seth? You cannot understand, Seth, the Monkey King, if you don't understand Taoism and Buddhism. That's my point. It's a spiritual epic, although, Gina, it's been dumbed down into Saturday morning kiddie shows in the age of capitalist television. Just like Gulliver's Travels is the most adult novel you've ever read in your life by the guy who, you know, Jonathan Swift, a modest proposal. He didn't write little kiddie stories about the big giant Gulliver. Ooh, Gulliver. No, it, it, is a, it is a religious satire. It is a political satire. It's wicked smart. But Disney made it into a little cartoon, and so everybody thinks, oh, children stuff, kitty stuff. Same with Journey, Journey to the West. I've got a couple of versions of Journey to the West. Uh, now we're talking club stuff. Talking after club. Did you? Oh, that was, that, so that was your question. Yeah. No, next year, like, Mr. Burnett. Mr. Burnett is offering a 1960s history class. He's doing one decade of history. Well, if he can do that, then I can do one novel for a semester, right? Or two. But, I mean, you know, could you read a thousand-page novel in 40 classes? Maybe one month. Anyway, more on that later. Uh, I'm hoping to actually not even be teaching at SAS Singapore anymore as of next year. I'm hoping to be teaching at SAS China. Uh, what? We're starting a summer program there. Knock on wood this summer. Uh, Dr. Stewart and I have been talking about this since last year. And uh, you heard that SAS is going to have, like, summer programs and all sort of things. And so, yeah, yeah, it was in, it was in that. Uh, SAS, what's that email that everybody gets? <coughs> the SAS newsletter that nobody reads, everybody reads? We get, we get an email? I from the superintendent. It. Your yeah. parents get it. In the loop or something. It's from called e-news. E-news, yeah. But anyway, okay. so, stay tuned, stay tuned. Now, I have not, I did read the, uh, the one he had thing. How shall we proceed now? You guys, you guys helped me remember how we thought we would be doing this process. You've done your now comment in your small groups. Now, how do we move forward from that in, into... <laughs> Alex is sitting there going... <laughs> I got <don't> like... <laughs> no, the roof of my mouth hurts. Oh. Oh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah, let's see. There were a couple other housekeeping games. I've been up since God. I'm sorry, I have a quick question. Yeah. How come on the comments, no matter what you do, it starts at like paragraph 64, then yeah. goes to 30, and then like 7? It's like super arbitrary. It's not even chronological. Yeah, it's just random. Even if you sort it, yeah, let's do it. Okay, notice there are all different ways to sort. There is sorted. Sort Seth, you click sort, and then you see, come on, at the very top you see sort by last name, sort by newest first. Now, I had a little gremlin, me and the guys who own this thing, the gremlin comes sometimes and it goes back to last name. I like Seth for newest first, whatever. Um, so you can sort by all different sorts of different sort views. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Anyway. My point in having you read this is to make you go, really? That's China's Iliad? Because there it is. You've read it. The great Wu the Marshal has overthrown the Shang Dynasty, and you've read its, you've read its poetic epic. And you've, <laughs> and you've read Homer's Trojan War epic. You've read about Achilles, and you've read about King Wan overthrowing the last Shang King. WTF. What are your thoughts about this before we move into philosophy? I guess that's that was kind of the point. That was kind of short. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose I would like to hear your thoughts. Um, since I've never taught this before, since I've never shared this before, uh, here here's what I've here's what I kind of predict almost. It's not the most exciting poetry in the world, is it? Is it more interesting when you realize that it is China's equivalent to the Iliad? It should be, because we're looking at the very seeds of two civilizations, the acorns that grow into trees. Uh, to 
tomorrow, I'm meeting with the World Studies 19 all day long. And we are starting at 8 o'clock and we're finishing at 4 o'clock. And I, I think I told you I proposed an entire sequence to get us to the no more meeting stage at 4 p.m. And we will make it because I have a protocol that will like make us by 10 p.m. Uh, by 10 a.m. We've got four out of eight semester summative, exa uh, summative exams planned out, everything, so we no longer have to sit for an hour going, I think the rubric should say effective instead of persuasive. Six teachers like debating whether it should, persuasive, should be effective or persuasive. One teacher like being glad that there are no weapons allowed in Singapore because he, he just is ready to mow people down. Um, uh, well, I got a sub. sub. Yeah. Um, but in any case, so I, I say that because here I sit yet yet again. I've got in front of you the Xu Jing. We can go straight into it after a, after a brief introduction, or we can briefly wrap up any questions, comments, thoughts before moving into the next. Yes, sir. As a PLC mm -hmm. member, a frequent PLC member, how do you define uh, success in the classroom? No, like, 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 if, 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 like, everyone is everyone getting an A, like, actually good, considering, like, no, 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 this is off topic. This is off topic. That's everyone reaching mastery is good. If they don't, they don't get an A because we grade by standards. Not A's are free for everybody. Now, if they didn't meet the standard. Let's talk to them and try to get them there. Let's let's try to help every single no child left behind. Let's try that. But at the end of the day, if you don't meet it by a certain point, well, that's just not. Hands. Okay. Great book, quit a man on that. Uh, final thoughts on on Homer and the Greeks or move into the last reading before we hit Confucius. Final thoughts on Homer versus the, the, the one eight. Move on. Let's move on then, you and I. I was reading uh, some research on the ideal size for group, small group discussions online. It said three to four. You guys had five. We had four. I think a lot of you had five. Did five feel like too much? No. No? Yeah. Oh, one last question I did have for you. I think it's two. Hey, do you find it a, do you find, were you interested in each other's remarks? Yes. yes. Okay. Because that, of course, that's the hope. Did you find any people, like, actually making you go, ah, oh, I didn't see that, it's interesting. This is good. I mean, this is just... What are you trying to do? You're trying to learn how to read more closely and see what other people see that you don't. And I'll tweet that. Um, my last, I guess, sort of checking in, this is turning into a pulse check. My last one is this. Thank you all for doing more than two. By the way, I did check the number. I haven't been able to do anything more than that. Um, Randolph was a star last time. He did more than anybody else. Mm -hmm. What? He had the highest number last time. I had ten. Size mattered. <laughs> yeah. We're recording. Size um, <laughs> I have not forgotten. I, I, I will be. We've got a paper coming up soon. And uh, by soon, I mean probably uh, at least a week from now. I'll give you plenty of warning. But I hope that you are interested in trying your hand at the different angles of reading. The historical, the reader response, past and present. The, what were the other ones? The, the formalist, the on and on on. I hope you are interested in trying your hand at that so that you can actually be surprising as college freshmen, not just doing the same damn thematic, thematic thing, which is what most people do. Uh, I know that was introduced. I know it's new and all sort of thing. Um, we haven't forgotten it. We won't. We will be revisiting it. People who have taken history of China, raise your hands. Those who haven't, look around. Raise them high, raise them high, raise them high.
Come on, Yoshi, you can do it. You can do it. Come on, Randolph, you can do it. There you go. See? You just keep trying, and one of those time days, your hand's actually like your elbow like is like that. It's amazing. They've studied philosophy, and the rest of you haven't as deeply as they have, probably, the Chinese philosophy. Those of you who have studied this, and again, she was the queen last year because she actually went back to this earliest. What you have in front of you is the, the six, six pages, seven pages, of the most honored heroes, culture heroes, of Chinese civilization. They will show up in the Taoism, they will show up in the Confucianism, on and on and on. They will keep on talking about these guys, Yao, Shun, and Yu. Even those of you who have read it, guess what I learned over the summer? Guess what I was teaching? My little, no, oh, China. <laughs> Whatever Japan did, China did it way earlier. Let's just put that to rest, okay? No offense, no offense. That's for saying I'm Including reading and writing by about 1800 years. What? Can we talk about the automobile industry though? It's a modernization. modernization. <laughs> Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I've been reading about this. I think they're going to into the U.S. I, I, I never think modern because it's tasteless. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. We, there, there used to be this elegant world, now it's just a bunch of people walking around like this, farting. <laughs> and they're not even like, normally it's some stupid little game. It's like chimpanzees, just like, oh, I made it go down, oh. It's just ridiculous. Moving on. Yeah. Pull out your journals. Pull out your journals. Pull out your journals. This is this is going to be very, very, very introductory and fast, but it's really, really deep. And it should make your head explode a little bit. Retrojection. Retrojection. Check the glossary. East and west. So that's for saying I'm the spawn of a tire and flower. What part of shut up meetings did you not understand? Shut up part. Cosmologies. Did we do the? Yeah. We did. We did. That's what Zach was saying. Was too long.
doesn't matter. Let's see. That's about right. That's about right. question. Yes? Uh, is there any evidence we have of the existence of Yashin and Yu before the Book of uh, Documents? I'm, I'm, I'm about to present all that in a, in a structured way rather than a let me walk the bird and answer its questions. Noah? Abraham? Um, Moses? I'm skipping some people. I know that. Now let's see, Adam was still alive when Noah, when Noah, no, let's see, how did that work? Doesn't matter. Uh, now, and the universe started according to Genesis, according to traditional Christian doctrine. The earth was created in the, um, <coughs> on October 9th at 9 a.m., of I think the year 4003 BC. This done by adding up all of the years that each person lived in the Bible. Any, anybody who's read the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. Numbers is the most horrible read because you think that the theogony was sick with all those and then so-and-so raped so-and-so, and that goddess begot so-and-so, and so-and-so, and so-and-so. And, you know, three paragraphs later, so you're finished with the names. So the begats of numbers, it's just like, these are the generations since Adam. That's the first line. And then it goes on and says, so-and-so lived for X, X numbers of years. And begat so-and-so who lived for X numbers of years. Who begot so-and-so, right? And it's just like, 40 pages later, you're like, Jesus, that was a lot of begats. Somebody actually did the work, a reverend whose name I forgot, and it became the accepted truth that the universe, six days, God rested on the seventh day, in the year 4003 BC, October 9th, and they even, like, identified the hour at which nature was finished after six days of work. 4003. So... BC, so it's about 6,000 years old. Um, so we'll call this 4,000. And we'll call Noah around 3,600. That's when the flood happened. You remember that you is the guy with the flood over here? For purposes of comparison, So these are the traditional dates. The Chinese say that the earliest man who you quickly read about, who created family and, and domesticated animals, is Fuji. Fuji. It's not Fuji. Oh, it's H-O-U-J-I. That's Fuji. No, that's Lord Millet. He is the first ancestor of the Zhou tribe. He's not the first human ever remembered. I thought it was to discover agriculture. Sorry. He was the first person to settle down to the Joe. Now, and this is interesting. It actually kind of figures into this. How many of you noticed? How many of you read Genesis? Did I have all of you read Genesis? Okay, those of you who took the opportunity, did you notice that there's actually two creation stories there? That in one of them? Who noticed? Tell me about it. What was the difference, particularly with the creation of a woman? Oh, like, I had to read this in the other part. 
between Genesis 1 and 2, the creation of a woman, did you notice the difference? Now, this is a close reading challenge right here. The second one put more, like, it was more specific about the way humans were created, so it had a lot more focus on the human, and specifically about the woman. It, was, it talked about how Adam, his rib was taken out, and then Eve was created from his rib. And, it, and it, then it went on to say that Eve was the one who originally ate the apple first. Let's see if I can find my annotations earlier, because I did it I did it separately and I didn't share it with anybody. Can you feel the This is seriously interesting. Look what's happening here. Male and female in God's own image, in the first creation story. Close the door well, you know this rule, thank you. Male and female, God created man in his own image, in the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. This is not the story of Adam and Eve. Male and female, in his own image, male and female, he created them. In this one, it seems like woman is equally divine to man. Do you agree with that? That's a claim. Yeah. They are, they, are, they are put on equal terms. They are both created in God's image. Wow, so woman partakes of the divine equally as much as man. A very, very feminist read, or very, very feminist, actually, uh, account of like the status of women according to God's plan, especially when you compare it to In the second one, he creates Adam, and he's like, oh, Adam's all by himself. That's not good. It's not good for him to be alone. I'm going, God, you're alone. Why is it bad to be alone if you're alone? Doesn't he have angels here? There are no angels mentioned in this. So you can make that stuff up if you want, but there are no angels mentioned in this. God has not mentioned created angels at all, and it lists every single thing he creates. That's interesting, isn't it? How many, how many people say that this, the serpent is Satan? There is no mention of the serpent being Satan here, and yet everybody thinks that it is. Well, show me the evidence, because there is no evidence in this text that it's Satan. It's You're reading symbolic. into it. Huh? It's like, yeah, it's like a reading into it. It's symbolic, because the serpent represents... Now, so, the Lord God had formed out of the ground all the beasts of the field and all the birds of the air, but for Adam no su suitable helper were, was found. So I made cows? Well, that wasn't a good partner for Adam. I made birds? I made fish? I made chickens? Nothing was a good helper for Adam. I'll create women. So he caused God to sleep, and he, while God was sleeping, he took out a rib, and he closed up the place, and he, and he made a woman from the rib. And he brought her to him. A completely different myth. The man said, this is now the bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife. Uh, blah, blah, blah. God breathed into Adam in this one. That's how God created Adam. He formed a, a Adam out of clay. 
and he breathed into him. The divine breath went into Adam's lungs, inspire. Respiration, spire, breathe. God breathed into Adam. Adam has the breath of the divine in him, the male. The female, God didn't breathe into her. God put Adam to sleep, he, he pulled out a, a rib, and he, and, he, and he made Eve, and there's no mention of her having God's breath in her. Um, if you read this closely, you will see that even the order of creation is different. It is an absolute contradiction. There's no way that both of them can be true. There's no way both of them can be true. For those of people who take it literally, I'm always like, well, how can you? I just like read it at the level of like an eighth grader, and there's no way that this can be taken literally because it's like on day two, this, the, the, the sun and the moon are created in the first one. On day four, the sun and the moon are created. Well, they both can't be true, right? So there's two separate myths. Scholars have done amazing work with this. They actually call one source the P text or the priestly text, and one source the J text or the Yahwist text, because these two sections use different words for God. One uses Yahweh, one uses Elohim, all sorts of stuff, right? And so we're like going, these are different, different texts that were combined into one book later on. Now, the question then becomes, There's a million questions. And it's interesting for people who like to really think about the, the story behind the book. Why do you think the second Adam and Eve story, which do you think came first? The one where women were equal or the one where women were suddenly inferior to men and to be controlled by them? Which do you think was the earlier one? Discuss amongst yourselves. Two questions. Which one do you think was earlier? Maybe uh, if you can come up with theories, that's great. That's what it's all about. The second question is, well, why do you think that this one would come up with a sexist one and this one come up with an egalitarian one? Those are my two questions. Discuss amongst yourself. You can think for a couple of seconds if you want first. 30, 45 seconds. We know that the Adam and Eve one, the males were the dominant slash superior, it came out as the favorite. Yeah, because that's just. Okay, we're reporting now. Did anyone have a thought? Okay, what about this? What did you think about the fact that one is so sexist and one is not? Why would there be such a difference? I mean, this is one culture, after all. Why would they be. Well, I mean, actually, would you really say it's very sexist because the last line of the more detailed one says they will come together as one flesh? That is in one large piece of flesh and one small piece of flesh. Yeah, with the, creation. the Adam and Eve one? Yeah. Yeah, but in the end, Eve is the one who like lets a talking snake persuade her to yeah. disobey God yeah. and curse the human race to mortality. Yeah. 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 She had less time to eat. Okay, anyway, do you accept my challenge? I'll think about it. I'll read it. And then I'll, then I'll read it. Is, is this still on now comments? The one you shared with us? Okay. I'm, as soon as you... As soon as you... Oh. Are there no... Here. I've got a, my cleaning lady is now doing the teacups. She's cleaning up the tea at the end of the day and I'm paying her. But uh, I'm going to have to tell her to leave these. That's your little change thing. So you throw it in there. That way... Dealing from my wife's retirement. And making me pay for your moon cakes. Oh, and we don't have any tea either. Jesus, you gotta remove it. Oh, yeah. Let me give you a little more. Is this your your junior senior? You're so like unemotional. Where's this going? I've got to find a better way to do this. So it doesn't just bring everything to a screeching halt. Yeah, you can grab one. We'll, we'll pass it. Just take the one cake. And just think about, uh, yeah, that one can come around. Um, 
Okay, Zach, leave enough. the room so that you don't get the lesson that's coming up in a time. Yeah, it should be enough. Uh, okay. Grab one. Do you have one? Oh, okay. <laughs> Was he about to do it? Yeah. yeah. Captain Gullible? <laughs> I'm going to give you one more piece of the puzzle. Let's see if you can think. Let's see if you can unriddle this Sherlock Holmes stuff is what this is. This is historical Sherlock Holmes stuff. I don't even know what that is, and I don't want to know, but it doesn't, it's, it's hard as wrong. text, making a claim, and giving you evidence, and then warn. I claim that the story that God breathed his divine breath into the man, but not the woman, makes the man directly connected to God, really like God's breath is in his body. So he has much more holiness than the woman who is one, one place removed, one degree of separation from God. Where does she get her divinity? Through the man. And the details are all like, you know, she came from him, and then it goes on to say that she she will be she will follow him, she will be obedient to him, all sorts of stuff, right? So, uh, and after all, God was making her because he was looking for a suitable helper for the man in the first place. He made the man first. I mean, on and on and on. All the evidence points to the man's more important. Um, but the other one, no, they were made at the same time. In Genesis one, they're made at the same time. That's not the story that won. The story that won is Adam and Eve. If the, the other one had one, it seems to be arguing a very different thing. God created them both at the same time. Both of them are in his own image. And so there is no divine justification for saying that women should be in second place to a man. Right? That's, and that's all I would say. Thank you. I was just wondering if, like, say that the first one, the Genesis one, was written first. Good. Okay, yeah, we're trying to think now. Yeah. Then we know we know that like the people who wrote it got somehow got their hands on the Bible and were able to get theirs published in front of And they put it in front Genesis too. But my question is why would you leave the second one in? The I don't think the people that wrote the story also published the book. Yeah, but but the people that made the, the people book. that that actually said this is our holy scripture. Yeah, why would they come? They 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 did make a choice obviously to say we're leaving them both in. And they contradict each other both in the order of things created and in the status of women. 
You see how, and, and, and people write books about this stuff, right? People like do serious, if they, it's a great question. What was going on? That's the simple question. What was going on there? Let me explain a little more to you. King David established Jerusalem in 1000 BC. That was very late in Mesopotamia. Very late. Because already in 3000, there were cities. So the same amount of years between Jesus and today separated King David from the, the, the first cities in Mesopotamia on the Tigris Euphrates in Sumer. A book that is 2,000 years older than the Bible is the Epic of Gilgamesh. And in the Epic of Gilgamesh, which is the Sumerian story of its hero, there are many gods because it's polytheist. And this goddess is as powerful as this god. And they're married. These guys have a god who's by himself and he doesn't have a wife. When you start thinking about that, that's kind of weird. I mean, you know, really. Especially, you know, we're all about, like, if we're fundamentalist Christians, well, you know, to you know, marriage is a natural between a man and a woman. Well, why is God like a bachelor, right? Why is there no woman in, 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 in this heaven thing, um, in this religion? Here's the history to it. Tell me if it makes you have any new theories. A goddess and a god. The temple had prostitutes in it. Temple prostitutes. You went to church and you had sex with temple prostitutes as a sacred union. For 2,000 years, that was normal. And this is the oldest civilization on the planet. Right? The Sumerians were overthrown by the Babylonians, but the Babylonians just continued the Sumerian religion of Ishtar and Enlil and all these others. And Babylon is Iraq, and Jerusalem pops up at about a thousand, and it's in the Babylonian Empire area. And Jerusalem starts saying there's only one God. The Hebrews, the Jews, start saying there's only one God. Well, that was considered rude in the ancient world, because when in Rome, do as the Romans do. You always respect the other gods, and there's no cultures besides this one that says there's only one, and all the others are wrong. And so that made the, that made the, the Hebrews unpopular, the monotheists unpopular, especially when they were conquered, and they wouldn't respect the gods of their conquerors. We just conquered you. We simply want to put a temple in here to our god, and every time we do, you monotheists start rioting, rebelling, and, and assassinating, and all sorts of stuff because you won't honor our gods. All the other places we conquer honor our gods. You won't. So in 586, notice Babylon. This is, how many of you know anything about this history? If you don't, this is just like staggeringly, staggeringly something wrong. It's just really interesting, okay? This is basic history. In 586, the Babylonians destroyed Jerusalem. They destroyed the first temple built by Solomon, David's son, because the Jews would not respect their gods and all sorts of stuff. And they just got sick of them. And so they destroyed the temple, and they took all of the Jewish priests to Babylon, which is near Baghdad today. And they kept them there in ghettos as basically prisoners of war for about 60 years. And the, and the, the, the Hebrew priests were like, were away from... The, the temple where, you know, God, God's house, we're away from our holy city and all sorts of stuff. And it's been destroyed. And is our religion going to die because we can't, we can't do everything that our one temple, one God religion has been doing from 1,000 to 5 days from 420 years. We can't do it. We're afraid that our religion is going to die. That's where synagogues start coming up places of worship away from the temple because they were captive. That's why it's called the Babylonian captivity. For about a hundred years, all of the elite priests, the rabbis of Judaism, were held captive in Babylon until you do know about 
the Persians because that's what the movie 300 is about. The Persians defeated the Babylonians. The Persian Empire overthrew the Babylonian Empire. And as they swept through destroying the Babylonian Empire and taking over everything that it had conquered, they swept through Jerusalem and Babylon. And when they got to Babylon, they said, oh, Jews, Hebrews, you've been captive for blah, blah, blah. Go back to your city. We Persians tell you, rebuild your temple. Do as you want to do. We respect your religion. You go ahead. We rule you, but rebuild your temple. And that's the Persian liberation. It's at this time that they built what's called the Second Temple Period that the Jews said, look what we found in the ruins of the temple. Look, it's the Bible. It was, it was hidden in the walls. This is an ancient text. Historians doubt it. Okay? Yep? Yeah? Generations, man. Born, grow old, die. Different. Born, grow old, die. And that's why the fear. Wow, we're growing old and dying here, and we're teaching our children, but we're afraid that, you know, what if we never go back? My last thing. What do you think the priests were seeing when they were in Babylon? The capital of? Oh, I see. Maybe, like, they saw all that. Are you all, are, if you're not interested, this has fascinated people forever. Yeah? Maybe, maybe they saw all that, like, from the school inside the temple, and they saw all the prostitutes and, like, the way they practiced their religion, and they got kind of, like, they were kind of, like, shocked in a way. And then when, when th that new generation came with all that knowledge of, like, the captivity and how horrible it had been and how bad that religion was, it changed their ideas about the role of women in religion. And then when they went, they wrote another story that was, that they wanted to put ahead of the uh, other one that treated women more fairly because they had a bad... There was a bad impact from staying in that long. Which do you think of these two reflects? Which do, which of these do, of, of these two do you think, now that you know the history, likely came after the Babylonian captivity? This one or this one? Juan's saying that one. Why Juan? I'm just thinking that they uh, they initially had the more liberal one, more feminist one. And after they saw what Zach said, uh, they thought, um, I don't know where the jealousy for women would come from, uh, or maybe just they didn't accept that they would be. Yoshi, can you turn and face me just so I don't feel like so I feel like you're part of the conversation? Guys, turn your turn your chairs 90, 45 degrees, and you're all part of the conversation. So not you guys, you're you're fine. Those on the inside. Thinking about a, li a little bit further, what are the what are the emotions of the Hebrews when they are captives in Babylon for two or three generations? How do they feel about their Babylonian captors who invaded them and destroyed the house of God, Heathens. Solomon's temple? Obviously, they hate them. Just like the Iraqis hate the Americans now. Right? or the Pakistanis when we drone them, whatever, right? We hate our abusers, right? We hate this foreign culture that has humiliated us and all sorts of stuff. And this foreign culture that's humiliated us really elevates women and the body and sex as a fertility act, because that's what she was, a fertility goddess. It wasn't just like porn, it was fertility. It was the magic of procreation, the, the, the role of the woman in keeping life going, right? It was a, it was a holy thing to them. It wasn't porn. It wasn't, you know, oh, let's go to church and have sex. Yo. Um, yes, Seth? Hmm? Oh, you're oh, just okay, then I can make a phone call. Okay. Uh, about the prostitutes? Yeah. Like, this is going to sound kind of weird, but how could you pick <coughs> a job as a priest prostitute? Because then, like, I'm guessing they didn't have contraception back then. Uh, I've, got, I've got a library of stuff because I, uh, I was invited to be on a national... Uh, on a public broadcasting, this is my first year here at Singapore American School, I wrote about Gilgamesh. I wrote like six or seven lectures online on my blog, the Unsucky English Lectures on Gilgamesh and Dangerous Questions. And it became famous. And uh, it got 70,000 hits in one day. It just went viral. Um, 
And uh, PBS ended up calling me saying, will you be on our TV show about Gilgamesh? Because we love what you're doing with it and all sorts of stuff. And so I've got a library over there that will tell you about the temple prostitutes and all sorts of stuff if you're curious. All right, It's fascinating stuff. In any case, while these guys are being captive, remember, they're the elites. Who's ruling the homeland? The Babylonians. What do you think the commoners are doing? What's happening to their religion? They're going towards fertility goddesses, agricultural goddesses. Worshipping woman. When the Persians free the captives and they go back to Jerusalem, they see the Jews, the Hebrews, have goddess uh, idols to a goddess name. That you know, I mean, I, I know what I'm talking about. For those of you who look it up, Asherah. And notice, you can even hear the, the Ishtar Asherah, very, very similar. Um, Hebrew, Babylonian language. So there was this goddess worship going on when the Jews priests came back to Jerusalem and they saw their own chosen people worshiping a goddess Asherah. Now, now do you understand why maybe the Adam and Eve story is much later? But it's still a mystery why, to me, I don't know the answer to this, that's what's great about it. You wonder, it's, it's an open question. Why didn't they win and get this story told first? Or did they think, were they so simple that they thought that people wouldn't be able to like notice the contradictions between this one and this one on page, literally, page one and page two? It felt like it would be disrespectful. Was that, was that story written? We're taking into account this. The first story was this, a this, this seems to be an earlier story. So like, maybe they were trying to like pay their respects in a way. Like, they felt that if they left it out, it would be kind of disrespectful to, to, to the people who had been before them. At a more like, pursuit. When you think about it, there's all sorts of possibilities. And it could be one of that. This tradition, we can't disrespect the tradition. It could be there's another group of priests who are equally powerful, and we don't want to have a civil war here or a bloodbath between two priestly rival clans. There's all sorts of possibilities here. But in any case, notice what happened. They say this, they say that this is their earliest story, but when was it written? David's 1000. It was written around 450. But they push it all the way back to the very beginning. Because if we say something happened in the very beginning, it trumps everything else. It's got more authority than everything else because this happened first, right? Now I'm going to tell you about retrojection over here. And now I'm HOC people, here's your challenge. You've read Yao Shun and Yu, but when you read it, you thought that Yao was earliest and Shun was next and Yu was next because that's the order that they're said to have lived. This is the traditional historical dates. This is what the scholar who I'm reading right now, who's reporting on the scholarship of many scholars. This is when Yao was written. Yao? Hmm. Around 250 BC. When did Confucius live? 470 or something? He died in 479. So we'll call him, you know. Lao Tzu and Zhuangzi, 475, 450, Zhuangzi, 300. When was Yao written? After Zhuangzi. Yeah. Uh, then how could this book be something if their stories are written in the future from when it was published? Well, they still have the other two. So then it was just two stories in the book of documents. Just like the Bible was a bunch of separate texts that all floated around in the hands of different groups of people who thought they were important. And then when the Jews said, look, we found this book in the wall of the temple, most people think, no, you made the book when you were in Babylon, worried that your tradition was going to die, and then you made this story about it when you came back, so everybody would take this book seriously and say it's ancient. That's the theory about the origin of the Bible. 
In the same way, the Xu Jing didn't come to its final form until probably even the Han Dynasty. All these texts are around, but they're not put into a book called the Xu Jing. Yao is there are there are there's obvious evidence that it was written around 250. Shun written around 450. Yu written around you know 800 or so. So this is the earliest one. This one's around the time of Confucius, and this one's around the time. the Taoists. When you actually read the ideas backwards, you start seeing more history there. Am I making sense to you? You actually start seeing like the same thing happening here, let's make women bad and push it way back to the beginning of our traditional history. Let's make Yao say all this stuff, do all this stuff, and push it way back and say it's the oldest one, when actually it's the latest one. Trippier still. These guys are said to be the very first. They're not even in the Xu Jing. It's the oldest Chinese book, those of you who are new. They're not in the Xu Jing, the book of documents. These culture heroes, they don't show up until I want to say the Xu Jing. And, and those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, I apologize. Which is around 100 BC. So what you see is, the more time moves forward, the more texts get written saying, this happened first, pushing things back and back and back. Who do you think would gain from saying, oh, but before Yao, there were these three? Yeah, I know three questions. <clears throat> so should, so um, it's the same year as when I also was born, 450. 450, is there like this? Yeah, and, and I'll have to confirm the dates. I'm doing this all from memory. But, but, I'm, but I'm, I'm solid on the fact that Yao is 3rd century. That's crazy. Because this is like very, 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 like Taoism is getting really strong here. Yeah. So it's kind of like... Uh -huh. It kind of puts into doubt the actual achievements and the legitimacy of this document. Because then, if it's written before, if it's written after, and they're just pushing the date back, then they're just trying to act like he's so cool. If that makes any sense. Like he's yeah, because they're saying yeah, because yeah. It, you know they they want you to believe that this book comes back from like the, the you know this part of history, but actually hear this. There are parts of this that do show evidence, lines of it. So now we're noticing that it's not even like, in the book of Genesis, we're saying that these are two stories. There could be paragraphs that are hundreds of years apart. Somebody like actually smuggled in a paragraph between these two things and added more stuff. Paragraph one and three could be a thousand years older than paragraph two, which is a thousand years later. They're patchworks. And that's what means, that's what makes reading closely really interesting. Is there any archaeological evidence that Yao Shun and Yu or Fu Xi Shen on, on the ever existed? These no. No, China China didn't start writing until twelve fifty. So all of this is prehistory. the remainder of the class. And you know what? 12 minutes is a long time to read. I'm going to make tea. I'm going to give you the remainder of the class to annotate. Now, you tell me, does this, does, I was thinking perhaps if I were, perhaps I would like to be able to read something and annotate it by, by hand and then gather my main ideas and put them on. Now, comment. What do you think? Yes, no? In any case, there. Is this on now, Colin? Yeah, uh, I put it on there just, just Can we just do that? Uh, I haven't invited you yet.
Those of you who have read it before, you might want to read it backwards. Confucius talk about them and all the Confucians, you will see the Taoists talk about them and emphasize different things, and it's, you can't understand Chinese philosophy if you don't understand these three, okay? It's my favorite book on planet Earth. <laughs> as, a piece of, as a piece of vision of what a civilization can be, it's my favorite book on planet Earth.
Here's my shoe jingle. Mm. Now on you and three others. No earlier than 250 BC. No earlier than. How can they tell things like the grammar being easier than the, the, the much older stuff? So, group C, 250. Athletus, that's the canon of Yao. Shun, also late. Wow, they're all old uh, or new. So what did Confucius for you? Well, no. Again, it's not like they were written from scratch. They were finalized. And then the latest changes to them. Like they show the most proportion for each one of these texts of recent grammar, of Taoist ideas of Lao Tzu and Zhuangzi. That may have been when the hundred schools of thought, right? From Confucius to Mencius to Lao Tzu, Zhuangzi, and all those philosophers arguing. That was a 300-year argument. And the argument went left and right over that 300 years. Taoism started growing and growing in importance. And so it seems like the canon of Yao is a Taoist text. And we call it a Confucian classic. Mr. Brock, um, when did the chin start again? 220. 220.